I vividly remember the 10 year old me super excited as we reached our grandparents house. A mix of yellow and orange marigold draped the entrance gates and every corner of the house was curtained with white lilies and jasmine as if they were there to give us a warm welcome. The whole house was adorned with string lights and bulbs were hanging from the trees. The atmosphere was filled with joy and laughter. We had been waiting for this moment for years. It was my maternal uncle's wedding. The following week and the preparations were in full swing. But the merriment came to a grinding halt when my grandmom, the lady of the house, fell unconscious days before the D-Day. She was rushed to the hospital and the doctors told us that she had suffered brain hemorrhage due to high blood pressure. The wedding ceremony was postponed. She stayed in coma for a few months before leaving her mortal coils without seeing her son's wedding. This incident shook me and left an indelible mark on my young brain. Since my childhood, I was deeply inspired both by my grandmom and mom. I was in awe with how they managed everything with aplomb, the sad, the tough, the turbulent moments. Irrespective of the crisis, big or small, they would handle it with empathy and compassion. I am profoundly grateful for the grounding presence in my life that helped me shape into what I am today. When I reflect on their qualities, it reminds me of all the other women I have met at work or otherwise. The ones running businesses or in top managerial roles or the ones handling their homes really well. My respect and admiration to all. However, I noticed one thing common in all of them. At times, knowingly or unknowingly, they have to overstretch themselves in order to accomplish the tasks at home and at work. And as they do so, they might feel a burnout over a period of time. There's no doubt that we live in a competitive world and to succeed, we need to be equally competitive to stay ahead of the curve at all times. But while doing that, we end up competing with ourselves. That is, competing to be a great employee versus the best mom. This desire to be number one across all fronts pushes us to always be on our toes. While it is a good thing, but then it leaves us with very little time for ourselves. Why do I say that? Well, because I have lived that life and survived that burnout. Today on this platform, I'm here to share my journey, my struggles and my learnings. I remember the first few years as a new mom, I was deeply involved with my kids, taking care of their every little needs. I willingly took a career break and let me tell you, watching my kids grow was deeply satisfying. When I resumed work, I committed myself to the job and gave my 100%. The first few years went really well. But after some time, we realized that our kids have started to fall back, both in academics and extracurricular. It was shocking, as I thought I had everything under control. Clearly, it wasn't. Reflecting on the issue as a family, we realized the problem was that my kids were too reliant on me. I thought I would be the best person 
to take decisions for them, to take care of their holistic growth. May it be talking, walking, sleeping or teaching. Well, there is no denying that mothers are the best caretakers. But taking everything on myself and not delegating it actually backfired. My kids were so dependent on me. Not only academically, but also psychologically and emotionally. So much so that they, can, they could not feel that same level of comfort with anyone in the family. Not even their father. The guilt swept over me as I witnessed my younger one losing confidence. What did I do? Like all the mothers do. I decided to spend time with my kids. So, I was doing a 9 to 6 job. I would rush home and spend another 4-5 or five hours with my kids. In short, I was doing a long 14 to 16 hours shift every day. And as expected, it took a toll on me. Within a couple of years of my joining, I had to quit my job. I know I'm not alone. Many of us have done that. As a stay-at-home mom, we continuously, tirelessly work for our family and our children. Yet, our efforts might not get appreciated. We rarely receive credit for the achievement of our loved ones we had supported day in and day out. But let me tell you, at workplace, things aren't bright either. Recently, I came across an article about a leading IT firm whose former vice president of talent acquisition testified in US court that she was asked not to hire candidates of Indian origin and women with children. Yes, you heard it right, not to hire women with children. Isn't it shocking? Are we living in 21st century? Is this the progressive world we are talking about? What about gender equality? Or is this the reason that we women continue to toil even when fatigue creeps in, even when we have to ignore our well-being? Let's face it. We cannot change the situation or people around us. But yes, what we can change is our attitude, our approach towards the situation. But before that, let me ask you all, take a minute and introspect. And as we introspect, let's confess that somewhere we take pride in calling ourselves superwoman. And as we desire to be one, we ignore our well-being. Let me be clear, there is nothing wrong in aspiring to be a superwoman. But be mindful that we are humans with limitations and without any superhuman powers. You know, when this desire reaches its extremes, it somewhere turns into a superwoman syndrome. That's what I call it, superwoman syndrome which kicks in the dopamine effect that in turn results into overdoing of things and overstraining ourselves. So what is the way forward? Today I speak as a woman, as a mother, as a solopreneur. I want to share my ASPA framework that helped me come out of this superwoman syndrome. Let's see it in detail. A stands for acceptance. Accept your human limitations. Now these limitations, these constraints can be your physical health or a troubled child at home or an unwell aging parent or in-laws who are dependent on you. No matter what. Once we accept these limitations, we not only acknowledge the problem 
but also find ways to either overcome them or work around them. Accepting these limitations help us not only professionally but also personally and in our entrepreneurial endeavors. And that brings us to number two, S, that stands for seeking help. As we strive to strike a balance between our families, children and our career, it's important that we make strategies to maintain our well-being. Now, if it demands seeking help, go for it. Ask for help. Hire a domestic help. Hire a 24 by 7 help or hire a service that would give you some time for yourself. Learn the skill to say no to the task that can be easily done by someone else. To avoid overstraining yourself. Keep in mind, you cannot fill someone else's cup without filling your own. And that brings us to number three, B. Prioritizing health. You know what? The greatest gift that you can give to your family or to the society is to be physically and mentally fit. Prioritize your health over any other task. Put it on top of your to-do list. Keep in mind, you have the power of choice. Choice to bring about a change, choice to prioritize your health, choice to maneuver your life in the direction you wish to. Use that power of choice in your favor. Last but not the least, A stands for appreciation. Don't forget to look yourself in the mirror and appreciate yourself. Appreciate your struggles, the journey that you've had and the place you are at. Have you realized that empathy is a buzzword in relationship building, in professional and personal arena? But what about self-empathy and self-love? Aren't these two the most misunderstood and underrated skills? Well, Self-love is not about praising yourself every time. No, it's not. Or shrugging off your responsibilities or becoming selfish. No. Self-love is loving the real you, the human you, with your limitations, weaknesses and failures. Self-empathy is empathizing with yourselves, boosting your morale in the darkest of the times. So right now, I would want you all to make a commitment. Make a commitment to yourself that you will stick by your side even when no one does. To summarize, I would just say, women are born leaders. They do not necessarily have to be a CEO to bring about a change. It all starts here. The way we perceive ourselves and mold the situation around us to make the best out of it. So as a society, let's act now. Rather than belittling the stay-at-home moms, start celebrating them, thanking them for being our first teachers, leaders and caretakers. They truly deserve our appreciation and support. As colleagues, one must recognize that women are great multitaskers and organizers. Take pride in having one as a part of your team. And to all the lovely ladies, my loving sisters out there, let me reiterate, there's nothing wrong in aspiring to be a superwoman. But if ever it starts impacting your health, it's worth recalibrating your approach. Consider it as a signal to pause, reflect, and evaluate your options. There is no shame in acknowledging your weaknesses and limitations because they make us imperfect. Keep this in mind and always remember, 
it is these unique imperfections that make you you that makes your journey unique so start today for a different tomorrow own your imperfections and flaunt your humanism thank you